How's everyone doing? How's ice cream? Good? Did it taste better from a tricycle? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so interesting title, uh, sort of gives it away a little bit. Uh, but actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, an interesting challenge that I faced this year. Uh, but it actually came, at, it sort of came around uh, actually quite an interesting time because actually in, in, my, uh, in my capacity at work and in the job we're in, we were sort of plateauing a little bit. And, and I was personally just in terms of where we were going, what direction we needed to take. So actually I was looking for something really to kind of inspire me. And my wife actually thinks I was probably having a midlife crisis as well, but we'll come to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's me uh, working for Tata Communications. That's me at the front. No, I'm only joking. Um, and we work for an incredible, we're part of an incredible brand called uh, the Tata Group, uh, founded uh, by Jam Sechi Tata uh, over 100 years ago. Uh, and it's one of the largest Indian conglomerates. Uh, there's about 96 businesses within that. We are one of those companies. They have companies like Jaguar Land Rover, uh, Tetley T, uh, and it's an amazing business to be part of. Uh, and they have, uh, uh, and, and so we're part of that sort of communication part of that business, as Anthony said. So I've been at the TAT Communications for two years now uh, and really enjoying the journey with, the, with that company. As the guys asked me to come and talk, I was thinking about you know, the usual things, talking about change and talking about work and talking about, uh, I think the usual word we use, digital transformation gets used quite a lot. But actually, one of the things that I've been going through this year is thinking about change. And actually, I'm, I'm somebody that's quite impatient. So I always look for, you know, what is the change? How do we get there? How do we get there very quickly? How do we transform things? Maybe, you know, personally, you know, in your life, in fitness, in work. How are you going to get to that goal? But actually what I realized, and I read an interesting uh, book that's sort of talking a little bit about actually embracing the process. So it's not just the change itself, but it's actually what goes in, what are the details, the specifics, every little thing you have to think about as part of that, and that is the process. And so I'm going to sort of talk about three kind of interesting takeaways that I've taken from this year and maybe go into the process of thinking that I took away to, to, to make those changes. And so as Anthony said, in order to do that, I decided uh, the best way would be to actually get punched in the mouth. Um, so there's a, there's a fast growing thing at the moment called ultra white collar boxing. I don't know if anyone's seen that, it's, quite, it's getting quite popular. And at the start of the year, I was flying back from uh, a short break uh, and I was on the plane and it sort of popped up on my Facebook feed. Do you want to sort of change your life in eight weeks and have the most incredible experience? And it was kind of like a bit of a, it was just happened at that right moment. So I clicked the button, signed up, uh, and the idea is you raise money as well for charity. So it was for Cancer Research UK. And the idea is you get to train, to, to actually go in a boxing match in a live audience and, and go through that process. And so the point was, I was wanting to think, how, what does that feel like? What would that experience be like? How much could you push yourself and, and, and really embrace that? And through that, a lot of things came out of that for me that you know, really has fundamentally changed the way I think about things. And I've been able to really use that in, in my day job and, and how I work with the team. And so what the first message and the first thing that I take away and, uh, is this idea of embracing uncertainty is one of the greatest strengths. And we always, I think, I read a really interesting uh, thing from Dr. Peter Diamandis, who's the founder of the X Prize. Uh, I was reading one of his books, Bold. And he actually, there's a really good paragraph in there, and he talks about the, the, the human being. And he talks about the fact that we've become too comfortable in life and, and we aren't actually, uh, human beings are built to actually look for uncertainty. They're, they're there to embrace it. We actually have a lot of ways to manage it, but we become very, very comfortable. And actually the idea of pushing yourself outside of that and trying new things uh, has a fundamental uh, you know, impact in terms of how you think about things, not only in your personal life, but how that then impacts how you work. And so I've, I started to really think about breaking that down. Um, and, and I sort of came up with sort of these five kind of key points. So the first one, embrace the journey as much as the outcome. So as I was going into, you know, this, this idea of training for eight weeks, and by the way, I was told the first day we went to sign up for this, this, this uh, the white collar boxing, the guy stood and he said, right, so how this is going to be, imagine being on a treadmill, setting it to its incline, as high as it can go, and sprinting for two minutes, non-stop, and then 
having a break for a minute and then doing that another two times at full speed while also getting punched. And, 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 and so it's like, well, how difficult can that be? Um, very. Uh, the training that goes into this is incredible. And so really, the idea is you're, I was going on this journey, so therefore you had to really embrace it and really think about it. So the idea really is about embracing that journey as much as the outcome. What's it going to be like? How are you going to think about it? And so as we went into that, I started to think about uh, you know, pushing yourself outside your comfort level. Um, we, we don't do that enough. I think we, we really sort of, uh, there's a lot of times we sit back and we, we make the easy decisions. And one of the things that was happening as well back in sort of in, in, in the office environment, back with the team, we were going through a lot of change as well. And, and I, know I could see, and personally, I was making sort of comfortable decisions. We weren't trying to really push the boundaries. We needed to make some fundamental changes. But actually, just, it's, it's easier just to, let's just do that, because that's kind of what the easiest path of least resistance. But actually, by pushing yourself and thinking, no, I'm going to really stick to the course. I want to make those decisions. And so as I went through this process, I started to really rethink and re sort of wire my brain in terms of how, how I really need to embrace that thinking. The other thing is about frame of mind and managing if, you know, negative chat. We all have it. Um, we all face that idea of uh, what is the state of mind when you go into work in the morning, when you've had a bad day or when something's going wrong. Um, there was days when we, you know, I'd go to the training and it'd be like, I'm in the back of my mind about why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? Um, the negative chatter starts to come at you and it starts to say, you, know, just, you could be at home tonight, you don't have to be in the gym training, you don't need to be pushing yourself. The days in the office when you think I could just be making those. That negative chat we all face is something that you know, I personally uh, battle with and it's something about how do you really start to think about how do you manage that, how do you change that conversation in your mind. And as, as I started reading a lot about sports psychology as I was training for this, for this, uh, for this match, I started to really embrace this idea of it's, it's what the story in your mind, it's the negative chats, how you manage that. And those things start to really change the, the way that you think about your decision making. So really having an idea of, of, of thinking about that. Um, focus on the positive outcomes. And again, I think in society, we always think about the negatives. We're always thinking about what could go wrong. Well, if I make that decision, this could happen. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, especially in, in combat sports, I read a lot in, interesting people that talk about, I mean, imagine in those combat sports, so much can go wrong. But if you're thinking about that a lot, it really starts to break down uh, you know, your attitude and your, your, how can you achieve it and the success that you can get. So really managing that idea of positive outcomes, how can you start to really think about that? And, and this idea, I said sports psychology is something that I really re read a lot into and it's something I've been able to really take, you know, again, back into to working with the team and sort of building that rapport and starting to build that kind of, uh, that mindset. Um, training for new skills and constant learning. I think when you're young, it's the idea of you were always looking, I used to love new things, but for maybe for the last 10 years, you sort of, you, you, know, you think you know what you know. You, you start, you know, you might believe you're learning new skills and really pushing yourself, but are you, are you truly sort of embracing it? Um, and I think as we get older, we start to think we know better. And one of the things I made a decision when I went in to, to take on this challenge, um, was that I'm just going to go in and go, you know, I have no clue. I've never done this before. I've never been in this situation. I've never trained this hard. I've never, uh, you know, had pushed myself into that situation. So I'm going to just open myself up and just take all the learning that I could get and all the training and also use a lot of it myself, take my own initiative to go off and learn. And, and that was an amazing experience. The second message that or sort of learning that I've taken away from the experience is really about visualize every scenario and you will be prepared for anything. It was probably the thing when I read into this idea of visualization that I think probably everyone's heard of it, but when I actually sat and read quite deeply into it and thought about this idea of visualizing um, scenarios, what it's going to be like, uh, it, was the, it was the thing that probably worked for me more than anything else. Um, and, and what that looks like is uh, you know, be ready for any situation. So when you visualize, it's about how do you create the stories? You literally create the movies in your mind, you play them out, you think about every scenario, you start to really you know, play them. At one point, actually, I think probably four weeks into when I was going into the fight, uh, I was in my bed at night lying there, literally playing out every scenario that could happen. 
So everything from how you feel, what you eat on the day, how you get there, what it's going to be like, how you're going to interface with people. You know, so, so building really all of those, those stories into your mind. And the idea is the more you do that, the more that you actually, you, you don't have any surprises when you're in that situation. You actually feel like I've been there before, I've experienced this because you've been through it so many times in your mind. Um, and I, I, I think about that a lot as well when you're going into situations and projects and work. Do you really think through scenarios and visualize how things are going to work, how project meetings are going to land, how projects uh, are going to end up? How do we think about all the different scenarios and visualize them in our heads and actually think them through, especially in conflict situations where you know, anything can happen? Um, and so really thinking through those messages and those stories in my mind was something that was a phen phenomenal experience and something that I've taken away and I use an awful lot. Um, and so thinking about your emotions as well is another thing. It's not only what's going to happen, but it's how do you feel. One of the things that, especially when you're dealing with change and you're dealing with any kind of transformation, it's very emotional. It's very, you know, a lot of passion and energy goes into that and people feel very strongly. So really understanding how do you feel, what's your emotions, what that experience is going to be like, how does other people think. And so really trying to get deep into that emotional space and, and visualizing that not only, you know, uh, from a sort of, from a visual point of view, but from a feeling point of view. Again, is it something we do a lot? or is it something we, we don't think about? And so now I've started to try and really manage that, especially you know, during this process, having to manage emotions in a sort of combat environment was definitely important. Uh, and then combining that with breathing and mindfulness, uh, and I know mindfulness has become a hot, trendy thing, and a lot of people I talk to, you, you know, the, the app everyone's got and stuff. I'd never really done it before. I had done you know, some of the breathing techniques, but actually learning to breathe, learning about mindfulness, actually meditation, which does take you know, a bit of effort to get into, but once you've done it, it's an amazing experience. And I think uh, for me, it, it gave me quite a lot of um, calmness and it really controlled a lot of my nerves, especially as I was thinking about, you know, again, going into this you know, combat situation and to be a human punch bag in front of people, you really need to think about how do you stay calm under that situation. And, and again, I've really embraced that this year uh, and I highly recommend that if anyone hasn't tried it to, to, to give it a go, it's, uh, it's wonderful. And the third sort of message or learning that I've taken away is this idea of, uh, and, and I say this word, execute completely. Uh, you know, see it through and believe in your capability. Um, and so, you know, a great example of that, actually this year we, we've, uh, we've been going through a lot of change uh, back in uh, TAT Communications. Uh, we had... There's many things that I've been trying to, to execute. One of the big ones is our, our new web experience. And so I had actually put that off for quite a long time. Um, and and I kept, again, going back to that point, not making the comfortable decisions, but actually there needed to be some big decisions. And so this idea of, you know, let's execute that you know, completely. Let's make the decisions. Uh, let's really turn that around. Some tough decisions, but let's believe in the fact that we have the capability to do that in tough environment. Um, we actually felt that we needed to make that happen. So actually, I started to really use some of the, again, some of the learnings and some of the beliefs that I've taken away, uh, brought it into, you know, to some of the environments that we're going through with change uh, within the work. And, and again, some of the things there is, um, so being confident uh, in making those decisions. Um, it's so easy, again, going back to the point, we were trying to make some fundamental changes, but not being able to really stand by them. And, and, and for me, it was sometimes, you know, a lot of the internal politics that you have to deal with, you end up making those easy decisions. But again, going back to this, you know, the training that, you're putting, that I was putting in separately started to really make me think um, and give me that confidence that actually these are the things we need to do and we need to execute them, we need to make them happen. And so that became something that, again, uh, you know, really made a fundamental difference. Um, taking a lot of punches, and I think we're all in environments at work or in the office or even in life where we're having to deal with conflict um, and we're sort of taking a lot of heat and taking a lot of punches. Um, 
I mean, so actually going into that physical environment is one thing, but we actually, you know, we, that does happen a lot. And so really it's about how you think about that and how you deal with it. And the mindset uh, that you get with taking on these challenges and embracing uncertainty and really challenging yourself starts to really, I think, build a lot more strength um, in your own capabilities and actually allow you to take more of those without being affected. And so that's something that definitely, you know, I, I absolutely have, have embraced this year. Um, one of the things that Matt was one night we were actually setting up, um, we were in India, we were actually going live with uh, our new web experience and it was probably about eight o'clock. Uh, we were meant to be going live about nine, 10 o'clock. I remember even thinking of how many, going back to this idea of thinking through every scenario, I knew that lots of things were probably gonna go wrong. Matt was like, nope, we're fine, we'll be, we'll be live, we'll all be good. But actually it was by, by I thought had 10 IT guys on a call another four hours into the morning. Uh, we were still not live. We had a lot of internal issues uh, with some of the CDN delivery of uh, the, the network infrastructure. And so actually, at, at that point, I remember thinking how close we were just to switching back. But actually, Matt was like, no, let's stay the course. You know, let, you know let's stay it. We need to get this done. It's going to happen, believe. And so really about, you know, just taking that, 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 that step to stick with, be confident, know your abilities, and just execute completely was something that we, we, we did. Uh, I'm also this idea of constantly testing yourself. I think really, um, it's, it's e as I said, it's easy not to basically go out there and, and, and take the comfortable option. But actually, I think testing ourselves in life um, and, and lots of challenges, there's lots of, there's a big movement at the moment, taking on new challenges, taking on um, things like Tough Mudder, there's the white collar box, and there's all these kind of physical challenges. But there's this idea of pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, really trying new things, and constantly testing what your limit is. Um, we were having a conversation like at lunch with Arjo, and we were chatting about, you know, as you, as you sort of get older, you sort of become more comfortable. And, and actually, it's like, how do you really want to embrace new ideas? And also test yourself, learn new skills. Um, it's something that I think we, we, we all probably want to do more of, but we don't. And it's something that I definitely know, you know, leading up to, uh, you know, as I get into my 40s next year, it's an area where I about just embrace learning more, just constantly want to learn new skills, push myself, and actually adapt. Uh, and I think we're going through such change that, you know, in work, in life, the fastness, the pace that we're going at, it's the idea of being comfortable with that and just accepting it, but actually working with it and learning and embracing those new skills is something that I think we all, we all need to do more of. I think, insert picture of team. Um, yeah, so our team in India, uh, we, had a, we had a workshop um, uh, just actually, I think it was about four, four, five months ago, and we actually got a lot of our team together. And this was actually an interesting situation where we got a multitude of different marketing teams together. And really this was about how do we all come together. This was like, like training for us. This was like an internal get together, really learn our new skills. The idea is we could, you could, we could have conflict, we could have arguments and debates about all the different things we're trying to achieve but actually start to break down some of the inertia and some of the, you know, the problems we were having in making those decisions. And really getting that everyone in the room together, breaking those down um, and, and enabling that conflict to happen and actually start to work through solutions was an incredible experience. And actually just like face to face and actually bringing everyone in a room. Um, and again, the analogy for me back in the training was, you know, we were in, uh, training sort of three nights a week in the, the boxing gym and actually bringing everyone together, uh, the, 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 the conflict you'd have in that environment and how did that work in, in, in a work environment. There's a lot of similarities in terms of how people are feeling, the emotions, uh, the different reactions that people have and actually started to be quite interesting to see how those things started to correlate across different scenarios. Um, but yeah, but bringing people together under that scenario really helped, I think, with, with making the changes that we needed to make. And also, I think, I mean, who, who's stuck in a rut? Who, who, who's ever been stuck or, or feel that they're not, you know, cheat, we're not going in the right direction? I think we all face it. We're all sometimes uh, in that situation where, like, uh, I don't know, you know, generally in your life, with family, with friends, with, uh, you know, physical situations and work, we all hit those situations where we're like, I'm just not really sure where I'm going to go. I don't know what direction to take. Um, I mean, I've, I've faced that, you know, I think we face it quite often. And, and it's about, right, where do we want to take that? What's the, you know, what are the things you want to do? And I think for me, it's about how do I challenge myself in other areas? It's how I learn through physical activity, through taking on these challenges. Um, 
is actually a way for me to really open up and change my mindset to how I look at things and what my outlook is. Uh, and it really exposes you to things that, that make you quite vulnerable. And actually being vulnerable sometimes is, is, it helps you grow, it helps you learn, and it's an amazing experience. Um, and so really, for me, you know, these messages really of uh, you know, embrace uncertainty is one of the great strengths. Visualize every scenario and you'll be prepared for anything. And execute completely, see it through and b believe in your capability. Those are the three lessons that I've taken away from some of the experiences I've had this year, especially with the boxing. And it's something that I'm gonna build on you know, into the future. But one of the things I'd like to say for a finish up uh, it's really it's sort of as a, an ask to everyone in the audience and to everyone here today. I mean, obviously, the conference is about this idea of change. We've heard a huge amount of you know, excellent presentations today in a whole host of different areas. But actually, what changes uh, can you make today? What things, very small changes, do you want to make today that's going to really impact your decision tomorrow? It could be as small as it something to do with what you do tonight, what you do to, you know, when you get up in the morning. What small changes, what that little small process that you make will, will kick off some of those bigger opportunities to really make a difference. Oh, and I should say, I, I actually did take a punch uh, at the very first thing when I went in. I got hit very, very hard. Uh, luckily, I had a plan. Uh, and, and I stuck to it and worked really hard in the training uh, and won that match. And it was one of the hardest, toughest things I'd went through. Uh, I, I have so much respect for anyone who gets in any combat sport, but especially boxing, the, the fitness levels of these guys. I mean, at that point, my lungs were actually on fire. I couldn't breathe. It was insane. But it was, one of the, it was a very, you know, it was a very vulnerable, very scary experience, but something I'm very proud of. Uh, and it helped me grow as a person and, and really sort of embrace a lot of the changes that I'm now putting into my life today. Uh, but also what, one of the most important things as well is this idea of respecting your opponents and this idea of, you know, at the end of anything in any walk of life, the idea of having respect for people and having respect for the people you, you sometimes have to challenge. But actually that, for me, was one of the most amazing experiences. Thank you for listening. <laughs>